Breaking news. Until West agrees to his terms, a grain deal is off the table. On Monday, Russian President Vladimir Putin said that restoring a historic agreement that allows Ukraine to export grain safely through the Black Sea despite the war will depend on the West meeting Moscow's demands on its own agricultural exports. The demands made by Russia have been brushed off by Ukraine and its Western allies. Nonetheless, Putin's comments dashed hopes that his talks with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan could resurrect an agreement seen as crucial for global food supplies particularly in Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. In July, Russia said it would not extend the agreement because of a failure to fulfill a separate agreement to facilitate Russian food and fertilizer exports. Even though it has shipped more wheat than ever before since last year, it claims that shipping and insurance restrictions have hurt its agricultural trade. Monday, Putin reminded reporters of Russia's grievances and said that if the country's commitments were honored, Moscow could rejoin the deal, within days. Erdogan has shared this optimistic outlook for a resolution. He stated that a new package of proposals had been put together by Turkey and the United Nations to unblock the issue. We believe that we will reach a solution that will meet the expectations in a short time, Erdogan said at a news conference with Putin in the Russian resort of Sochi. Annalena Baerbock, Germany's foreign minister, had earlier criticized Putin for his game with the grain agreement, calling it cynical. According to her remarks to reporters in Berlin, the freighters don't have free passage again, due to Putin's actions. The negotiation has a lot of weight behind it. Developing countries rely on Ukraine and Russia as major suppliers of wheat, barley, sunflower oil, and other goods. According to information gathered by the Joint Coordination Center in Istanbul, which coordinated shipments under the agreement, China was the primary recipient of 57% of the grain exported from Ukraine. Grain prices spiked after Russia withdrew from the deal, but have since recovered, suggesting there is no major shortage at present. However, according to Gallup Dalai, an associate fellow at the Chatham House think tank in London, Failure to revive the agreement will have drastic impacts in countries like Somalia and Egypt that rely heavily on black sea grain. Russian President Vladimir Putin doesn't want to come across as the bad guy in the eyes of the global south as a result of this food insecurity, according to Dalai, so he is seeking an easing of sanctions while simultaneously engaging in a war of narratives. The Ukrainian government and its allies have repeatedly brought up the fact that Russia's action cut off food aid to many poor countries. Putin said on Monday that Russia was almost finished negotiating a deal to provide free grain to six African countries, possibly in response to that accusation. To the countries of Burkina Faso, Zimbabwe, Mali, Somalia, Eritrea, and the Central African Republic, he had previously promised shipments last month. The Russian leader also mentioned that his country would be sending 1.1 million tons of cheap grain to Turkey, which would then be distributed to developing nations. Ukraine's main Black Sea port is located in the Odessa region, which Russia has repeatedly attacked since Russia backed out of the grain deal and began attacking. The Kremlin's forces opened fire on the Sochi area again, for the second time in as many days, just hours before the upcoming meeting. The Ukrainian Air Force reported that 23 of 32 drones aimed at the cities of Odessa and Dnipropetrovsk were successfully intercepted. The report did not detail the harm that was done by the survivors. Perhaps Russia thinks it can use its control over Ukraine's Black Sea exports as leverage to get the West to ease economic sanctions. Western allies have assured food and fertilizer are exempt from the sanctions, but this hasn't stopped some businesses from being wary of doing business with Russia. Moscow is still not happy. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuliba pleaded with Moscow to rejoin the agreement on Monday, saying, there were no legal and political grounds for Russia to withdraw from the agreement. The talks on Monday came after Ukraine launched a counteroffensive against Russian invasion forces. President Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine announced Sunday that Defense Minister Alexei Reznikov would be replaced this week. Zelensky remarked, new approaches, but did not elaborate. 
On Monday, Reznikov shared an image of his resignation letter with the world. After a failed coup against Erdogan in 2016, Putin was the first major leader to offer his support, and the two are said to have developed a close relationship. Both Putin and Erdogan are authoritarian leaders who have been in power for more than two decades. Throughout Ukraine's 18-month conflict, Turkey's president has kept those in place. Turkey has emerged as a major trading partner and logistical hub for Russia's overseas trade because it has not joined Western sanctions against Russia following its invasion. However, NATO member Turkey has also shown its support for Ukraine by sending arms, meeting with Zelensky, and encouraging Kyiv to join the Western alliance. In the meantime, Russia has taken measures to fortify its armed affairs ties with North Korea. On Monday, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shigu, who visited Pyongyang in July, hinted at the possibility of joint military drills between Russia and North Korea. Adrian Watson, a spokesperson for the United States National Security Council, said that during his trip Shigu tried to convince North Korea to sell Russia some artillery ammunition. American officials believe North Korean leader Kim Jong-un expects these discussions to continue and to include leader-level diplomatic engagement in Russia, as Deputy Secretary of State Thomas Watson stated on Monday. The United States anticipates that Kim will travel to Russia within the month, according to another U.S. official who was not authorized to address the matter publicly and spoke on condition of anonymity. The official said the United States does not know the specific date or location of the meeting, but that the Pacific port city of Vladivostok is a possibility due to its proximity to North Korea. After Shigu's visit, the White House reported last week that it had intelligence suggesting Putin and Kim exchanged letters. The letters were more at the surface level, National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said but negotiations between Russia and North Korea regarding a weapons sale were progressing.